Hi, it's Anne from The Useless Crafter. So I thought I would do a basic beginner print then cut tutorial for all of those that just got their Cricut over the holidays or if you've never tried it before. So I'm gonna go super basic, okay? This is what I think a lot of people would use it for is um, making labels for your pantry. So let's start out by clicking on your text so that we can label, type out the labels, right? Um, I'm going to pick one of my favorite fonts because it's just so stinking pretty. It's called Hannah Berry Koo. So you can search up here. Um, it is not a design space font. It's from Creative Fabrica. And um, you can go to the link in my profile page if you want to try, try it out. It is a subscription based or you can buy per item. Um, but I do have a discount code and if you want to try it for a month, it's a dollar. Anyway, won't talk about it more. I love it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> all right. So Hannah Berry Koo, I'm going to type a uh, flower, um, sugar. Uh, what else do we have in the pantry? Um, pasta, um, brown sugar. All right. We're just going to do these four labels. Okay. So, um, these are all together, so I'm going to ungroup it. And what you want to do is for each one of these, you're going to want to weld it so that the letters flow and it's one piece. You're not going to see the individual outline. Okay. And, um, I don't know if you want to do them in different colors, let's say, You can do each one a separate color. All right, come on. There we go. Sugar, I'm going to um, weld. And let's just weld all of these at one time. So pasta, weld. Now brown sugar, you may want this to be stacked, right? Like if you're if your label, if you don't want it to be this long, I'm gonna do it both ways. So I'm going to duplicate this so that we can stack them or do brown sugar as one long line. So I grabbed it all, hit duplicate, um, and I'm waiting for it to duplicate. Okay, here we go. So we're gonna weld it. And then on this one, we're gonna move this down. Let's weld, oops, let's weld sugar and let's weld brown. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I'm gonna align the two and it's easier to align them once they move as one. So I'm gonna put brown up here, grab both of these and go to align and I want to center it. Okay, so now with this, um, let's change all our different colors. If you want it to be, you know, rainbow ish, or you, you want one color, you can do that all here. So I'm just going to quickly make these into the colors. Okay. Now, if you want to do like just, um, a little white label, you know, like a rectangular, then you want to go to shapes. I'm going to show you a few different ways to do it. So you can pick any of these shapes. I'm going to pick this one. And you want this background so that it's an easy label to pick, pick off. If you just do the word flower, you could do that as well, but it's a little bit harder to see, right? Um, cause you're gonna have, well, for flower, you're gonna have the white background, but um, the sticker is easier to handle if the, if it's like if there's a full piece behind it, right? If you did a sticker just like this, it would just be the word, so you'd be lifting off the word, or you'd have to transfer it with transfer paper. So I want to do labels in the traditional sense. So here is my label back here, and I'm gonna move this to the front, arrange, send to the front. And you can resize this label, right? You can make it a little bit smaller to fit here. And then you can grab these two items and go to align, for instance, and center it. 
So that's completely centered. Now, if you want your background to be a different color, you can make it white. Um, white's a little bit hard to see in this sense, so I'm just gonna change it, but you can change it to any color. I'm gonna make it pink, okay? So now what you wanna do is you wanna grab these two items and you want to flatten it. You wanna take the two items, flatten it into one so it becomes a sticker. That's kind of hard to read. <laughs> Let me unflatten it. So that's this is a good time to make any changes, right? And I unflatten it because I don't like the way this is looking. I'm gonna change that color to, um, okay, not that you would do this color. I mean, maybe you would, but right now it's just, I wanna make it more legible. Um, okay, so here I'm gonna flatten it. All right. Here is another option, okay? If you want to make it easy where you don't want to have to, you know, do the little cutouts inside here, then you can do an offset. So, an offset's nice because it gives you that outline and it's the exact outline of your of whatever image that you have. So, you can kind of see it's rounded. It's not just a square or a rectangle and it looks like, you know, it it goes along with the word. You can make this offset thinner by moving this dial right here, or you can actually type in exactly what you want. So I'm gonna type in 0.15 and apply. So you could do that. You can change this background black to um, orange, okay? Then these two items, you're gonna grab it and you're gonna flatten. So now you have these two types, okay? Um, let's say you have pasta, but you wanna actually add an image as well. We can go to image, and let's see if they have any fun images for pasta. So I'm gonna search for pasta. And somehow pasta is giving us 2022. All right, did I not hit enter? Obviously, I, I don't know what to think here. <laughs> okay, so type in pasta, hit enter to search for all pasta images that are available in Design Space. Um, if you just got your Cricut and you haven't decided whether or not you want access, um, I like it because of this. There are so many images. I don't wanna to have to always go search for something and then try to get the free version of it. Um, I like having this at my fingertips. So to me, it's worth paying, um, I don't know, the $12 each month or whatever it is. Okay, so they even have, you know, I mean, all these little things that you can do. Um, I'm gonna pick, Maybe I'll pick this one. So you click on it, it's highlighted in, it's, you know, in green right here. I'm gonna add it to the canvas. So next to the word pasta, maybe you know you have young, young kids that still need help with reading. You could do this. You can make this a little bit smaller. You could do something like this, right? Um, all right. So the same thing with this, you can either have an offset so that it outlines all around it, or you can make a, um, you know, just a, a, a flat shape of some sort. So um, on this one, let's do the offset because I want to show you something else. I'm going to make this offset a little bit thinner. Okay, I'm going to go to 0 0.10. Make a really thin offset and I'm gonna apply. Now the reason why I did that is because I wanted you to see how like when it does a thin offset, there was some empty space here. So if I were to do a sticker here, it would cut out these little pieces. If you don't want that cut out, which I norm I usually don't like it, we have our black outline, our black offset right now highlighted, right? Go to contour and we can easily get rid of those spaces. See these spaces? I'm gonna click hide all. And when we go back, all those pieces are gonna disappear and it's gonna give me a solid black outline, which is what I want. See, and now you have that. Now I don't want it in black, right? I'm gonna do this one in white. 
So you're gonna have a white background with floating pasta and then the word pasta. All right, let's look at brown sugar. Um, so brown sugar right now is not yet, it's, it's moving as two pieces, you see? We aligned it, but we didn't um, make it permanent. So what we could do right now is we can grab these two again, go to align, and you can center it horizontally. Then to make it more permanent, well, it's not, nothing's permanent per se. I'm gonna attach it. So it's gonna move together as one now. You see, so now my alignment won't change. Um, we can do an offset, we can put um, a cute little background, like if you made all your labels the same, you can go to uh, shapes and you can do like a fun little shape, like maybe, um, maybe this one, that looks more like a label to me. You can make this a little bit bigger. If I were to do labels and if you want it to look uniform, I would make a set um, size for this. So let's make it, let's say all my labels are gonna be four inches. So it's gonna be four inches um, wide and then the height is 2.744. So what you wanna do is you wanna arrange to the back, send it to the back so that your words are gonna sit on top. Okay, and then we can now center this as well, right? Go and click align and center it. So now it's perfect. Um, we can change that back to, um, let me change it to a purple and see what that looks like, okay? <laughs> just, just in case. Um, all right, so we've got that. Now, we have one more, so let's do this one. Um, let's just do another shape for this one. So I'm gonna go to shapes and I'm gonna do, Maybe like a fun, you could do this one. And I wanna do this one just because I wanna show you. Obviously this isn't gonna work this way. So you can go and rotate this. Let's rotate it um, 90 degrees. There we go. And you can make this bigger to fit that, right? Arrange, send to the back so you can see the words on top. And then you can align this as well. Grab the two items and center it. So that's centered. Okay, let's change the back of this to, let's do blue. Now what you wanna do is we have all of our images, right? But we want to flatten it so that it will print. <clears throat> so this one's already flattened. What that means is, is once you flatten it, that tells Design Space that you want to print, then cut. So you're gonna send this to your printer. It will print exactly the way we, we have it shown. And then you're gonna, after you take it from the printer, you're gonna walk over to your Cricut and you're gonna put it down on the mat and you're gonna have it cut. So then the Cricut's gonna cut around the lines exactly the way you want it, okay? So that's that's how that works. If you don't, if you have something like this, this says it's cut, it wants to cut this. It's not gonna print it, it's just gonna cut everything on cardstock or on vinyl. So we wanna flatten everything. So let's grab, let's grab this and flatten so it becomes a sticker. And you see how like before, like on this one, you have the black outline because it's it's cutting that, right? Um, when you flatten, that black goes away because now it's just the words are in blue and the labels in purple. So you'll see that it looks different. So here you have that black when you go to flatten. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now it's just a purple sticker, a purple label with the um, blue, brown, you know, brown sugar is in blue. All right, so let's grab these items right here and flatten. And then now you can see on your right-hand side panel, everything has been flattened. So now let's go to make it. Now we're gonna actually, when we're done designing, we're gonna go make our labels.
Okay, so it's printing all on one sheet of sticker paper and um, we're gonna click, we're good with this, we're gonna click continue and you're gonna send to your, oh, oops, hold on, it's gotta connect. I'm gonna send it to my printer. Now, the, the printer, uh, you know, it's already um, connected, so you can, you know, these are all my printers, but I'm good with this printer. I want one copy. I want to add bleed, and let's talk about bleed for a second. So you see how this brown sugar label is in blue? When you add the bleed, what will happen is it will, um, it will extend that blue a little bit more so you'll have an extra blue outline and why that's important is because when you send this to your Cricut it's gonna cut and you're only gonna see the blue because it bled it gave me an extra blue border so that when I go to cut it I'm not gonna see any white so if you don't have bleed on it has to cut exactly where the blue ends you might get some white and i have an example of that so like i made these stickers and i had bleed on so if you see i'm gonna peel this back a little bit my sticker is completely blue there is no white outline so almost always you're gonna want your bleed on all right then you go and you click print it will send it to your printer once it prints then you come back to this page and it says printed already now i've had some problems with my printer before where the paper got jammed if you ever need to go back to print even though it says it's printed already just click on this part step one click on it and it will allow you to send it to the printer again if you're done with printing then you go to set your base material and here you're telling the the Cricut, what did you print this on? If you printed this on sticker paper, you can go and browse all your materials and you can search for sticker paper. This, this part is sort of like get to know your machine <laughs> because it doesn't always cut exactly, even if you're using Cricut materials, it doesn't always work on the, on the same settings. So I'm gonna click sticker, hit enter, to search for sticker paper and you can select the type of paper that you're using so um, you know I'm gonna click do printable sticker paper on white um, you can click on the star the star what will happen if you click on the star so I'm gonna click on printable sticker paper and click done if you click the star those are your favorite types of materials up here I'm all starred out already these are the um, the materials that I cut the most, which is why I've starred them so that they're up here in my top 10. But anything else that's not in my top 10, I need to go and browse for the materials. Um, all right, so once you select that, then you go to your Cricut. You want to, anytime that you do print and then cut, I'm gonna just hover over here so you can see it. That black mark is your registration mark. What that means is when it, you send it to your Cricut on your mat, um, the sensor is going to read where the black is so that it knows where your blue label is It knows where your purple label is so that it can cut perfectly um, What you want to do is when you put this on your mat You want to make sure that your paper is to that corner where zero zero is so um, You want it in the top left hand corner You want to put your paper exactly the way you see it on the mat here if you have a 12 by 12 mat, it doesn't, I mean a 12 by 24 mat, it doesn't matter. It always goes in the top left hand corner. So you want to put your paper down. I always use a brayer. So even when it's, if my mat is sticky or whatever, I always just do the brayer because the brayer flattens out all your air bubbles. Um, and I've done it with my hands before and then I've gone over it with the brayer. And the brayer, let me go get that tool because it's right here, I can see it. The brayer is just that extra step. It really does get out all your air bubbles. The reason why you want that is because if your paper is not completely, your material is not completely on your mat, when the blade goes in, it gets caught up a little bit. You're not gonna get a clean cut if it's not completely flat on your material, on your mat. Um, all right, 
So I think that's all I have for you. I have the Cricut Maker, the original Cricut Maker, not the three, although I will be switching over to the three. Um, with my Cricut Maker, I actually cut on washi tape. I know, because the sticker, it just has not worked for me. So I cut on washi and I cut it twice. Now, when you want something to cut twice because it hasn't cut through completely, do not eject the mat. You leave the mat in and what happens is you have the arrow that's blinking, right? It wants you to take out the mat. Don't click on that blinking arrow. Click on your C again. When you click on the C, it cuts the exact same line that it just cut. So that way you're not gonna get a double cut. You're gonna get a double cut on top of the line. So then um, my washi tape for sticker paper works perfectly. Let's talk about two more things. Um, if you want really beautiful stickers, you need to do two things. You need to set your printer correctly. So um, I use needle labels paper because I absolutely love it. Up until then, I thought I had a problem with my printer. So I use needle labels. You can use my link for that um, and you can um, get 25% off your purchase anytime that you buy if you use my link and my code. Um, secondly, with that paper, you make sure that your settings are proper on, for your printer. So I do it on glossy paper and I also do it on, you know, like best color um, so that you get really vibrant stickers. So anytime that you do stickers like this one, they look store bought. They're bright. They look professional. They do not look like I designed them. <laughs> um, and with your Cricut, it cuts out, you know, especially with the offset, it cuts out along, you know, the, the image. So it just looks, it, it looks store bought. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Let me know what you think, what you want to see. I know a lot of you guys are doing this for the first time and I, Definitely did not use my machine to its fullest potential for a very long time. So I'm here for you. Let me know what you want to see and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.